the aim of the symposium is to get people to really support and, and push for the renewable energy uh, situation to take over. It's become quite clear, especially here in Australia, that it's not going to come from the top down. It'll happen from the bottom up. It's tremendously empowering for someone like me to come to a meeting like this because I think there is nothing as powerful and as effective as a community of people who have a common view and a determination to achieve something. And the common view that you have of sparking this uh, solar revolution here in Byron Bay makes a hell of a lot of sense to me. You're the people who see the first sun in Australia and in a solar future, that's got to be worth something. Yeah, you're going to be generating when other people aren't. Look, I'm Professor Tim Flannery. I'm Chief Counselor at the Australian Climate Council. It is increasingly difficult for scientists to speak up about climate change, particularly if they're employed by government. And that's why our organisation, the Climate Council, um, tries to do that job. We're not paid by government, we are crowdfunded by the Australian public and we take the information the Australian scientists would like to get out there and put it into the public sphere. Tim's probably the best known scientist we have in Australia, both nationally and internationally. He's stood on boards uh, across the world, uh, he's chaired climate change committees uh, across the world. And the figures I've seen from the International Energy Agency suggest that if we want solar to be contributing 16% of the world's energy mix by 2050, we're going to have to up the rate of deployment fourfold. We've let emissions grow um, far too much over the last decade and we now need to get very serious about reducing them and a big part of that is going to be the replacement of conventional fossil fuel electricity generation by solar and wind. So I'm here really to talk about the potential of solar and wind to do that. The North Coast is really taking to renewable energy in a big way. It's got one of the highest uptakes of solar uh, panels. And part of the reason for that is the same energy that's driving the anti-coal seam gas movement is the same energy that's providing the positive move to renewables. Because you can't just have you know, negative Abbott type statements all the time, no, 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 no. You've got to have something positive to look forward to and that's what this uh, symposium is about today. I, I've, I've compared to the cost of my car and that, that works out at one fifth of the cost of running my other car, which is here with Kim, which is a Subaru Forester, but one fifth. Yeah. Oh, that's a, a lower, at a lower standard speed. commercially yeah. for I M I E V. Robert bought. I nearly bought one as well when he was doing his, and I wish I had. <laughs> I started about two and a half years ago, and at that time, um, to buy an electric car was incredibly expensive, like seventy thousand dollars. And I joined the um, Australian Electric Vehicle Club, and many people had made cars like this themselves so I thought oh well that's a good idea and I a friend told me about this guy in Perth who was making them I thought well, he's offering a good deal then I thought later on well, I'd buy a car in Perth so I then started on my own project so two and a half years later and many many tens of thousands of dollars later it's sort of finished it costs more than it would have cost to buy a brand new Mitsubishi SUV electric car that's not even counting my time well, I think what Byron's going to show is that if you pull together, you can do things. And people are doing things because they're concerned about the, the planet and the environment. But what's kind of driving the sort of things they're talking about now is the economics. So you can actually do the right thing, but you can save money at the same time. And really, when conservatives see that, there's nothing they can argue against it. So that kind of sweeps away a lot of their arguments. Tim um, mentioned the importance of the, uh, Paris, the Paris climate change talks this year. And there's a lot of um, hope and enthusiasm um, that we might actually finally get an agreement. Tim and I first met in uh, Copenhagen in 2009. And there was great expectations then. Um, and we're just talking about what a frustrating place it was. One of the reasons for that was, um, well, one of the reasons why there's more hope now that we'll get a solution in Paris is not just because the situation is becoming more dire, um, you know, the climate situation has got worse, um, emissions have continued to build. The other thing is, is that we've actually found, or we actually realise now, that we actually have the solutions at hand. Right, so where we are at the moment is in the... Uh What's colloquially known as the hangar number five, and it's a, a renewable energy run building put up by DETA near the Tiagra Airport just out of Byron Bay. This is a honey processing factory. Uh, we run bees up and down the coast and we bring all the honey back to this factory to 
process and pack and um, we produce a range of products, medicinal products, medicinal honey products and normal honey for the local market and we distribute Australia wide. The main thing about this plant is that it's all off the grid. Uh, we can run all our machinery, all our packaging, labelling machines, extracting equipment uh, straight from the sun. It's all solar powered. Dieter Horsman, uh, who owns this property, who produced this uh, building, has set it up so he can demonstrate what's possible, um, what's possible for the future. It's a Stirling engine, very old machine, patent from before the steam engine. It's driven by the energy, well, the heat different in, in, in temperature. Like it was an ice block once, now it's just cool. And up here it's a little bit warmer, maybe 10 degrees difference between the top and the bottom. And that drives, that drives the piston up and down. We've been meeting here for many years, 12 years or more. Well, the whole thing has been going for 30 years actually. So we're finally getting somewhere. People are listening. <laughs> All the different initiatives which are happening on community retailers and local generation. Lismore's 100% renewable plan, Byron's zero emission plan, Byron's virtual net metering plan. Um, it look, it's a lot's happening, and, and that's basically, you know, how the world's going to change is by people doing it individually and also collectively within communities. So.